Today's topic is just for the coronavirus. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're trying to make disciples using the tools at PursueGod.org. Maybe you thought, well, I can't do it anymore because I can't meet for coffee or I can't meet in my small group. We can't meet face to face. So disciple making is on hold. Well, today we're on with Pastor Scott Kreps. And Scott, we're talking about how to make disciples online or over the phone. Now, this is something that you do and I do. We both use the Pursue God tools. This is great for churches everywhere, for, for men and women, for students all over the place. But we're going to get really specific about disciple making over the phone or online. We're going to give some really basic um, insights. And the first one, Scott, is use the tools. And we're talking about the tools at PursueGod.org. I don't know the way that everyone uses the PursueGod.org tools, but maybe you use your tool, use them in a small group or even like in a Sunday morning at church setting in a, in a class or something. Uh, but I, I can say as one who's helped contribute to even Pursue God um, videos and stuff, the whole intention is to be very mobile with uh, the mentoring curriculum of Pursue God. And so uh, actually Pursue God's really well designed for such a time as this, mm -hmm. meaning, um, yeah, you can sit down in a coffee shop and, and disciple people, mentor people, and you have your phones out and you watch a video. Uh, and that's certainly what I do a lot, but you can also use the resources in other ways. And you can text video links to people, watch it, watch it and then talk about it on the phone uh, or in a, in a Zoom call or a Hangout meeting. So uh, really, I'd say the first thing is understand that the tools are perfect for the environment we currently find ourselves in. Yeah, and for me, I do a lot of discipling over the phone or online. Most of mine I do that way anyway, so this wasn't a real big deal to me. And maybe a lot of Pursue God mentors out there need to realize that if you're used to the face-to-face -face experience, that's wonderful, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, the, the experience can be very similar, but using the tools means just you gotta, for me, what, what I've noticed, Scott, is if I send out the topic ahead of time with the people that I'm mentoring, as long as I do that, then that puts us both on the same page and it makes that conversation less awkward on the phone, right? It's not me trying to trying to do all the dominating or do all the teaching like we're, we really are coming together. Now we can just use those discussion questions, which is really the second point is, you know, using the tools means that you're asking good questions. So sometimes, Scott, those questions are right there at the bottom of the topic. Um, but a lot of times it's your own questions, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing I've done for years on these Pursue God questions is beforehand, I always take a look and I always try to figure out like, okay, who am I speaking with? Who am I mentoring? What question really speaks to where they are in their life? And then I try to get to that one pretty quickly. But sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes it's just sort of like, okay, what are we talking about? And then how does it relate to... Um, to the person and where they're at and their needs. And so, for example, right now we're in quarantine, everyone's in quarantine. And I know that, um, I know moms and dads have a lot more time with their kids and, and they should be spending a lot more time as a family leading at home, doing devotionals and that kind of thing. So I've started my mentoring conversations in the last two weeks, started to talk more and ask questions about, hey, how's that going at home? Or, you know, if there's some truth in, in the, the, the video that we've learned, you know, how does that play out at home? Or even just one, I just said, hey, this video I think would be great with my kids. Do you think it'd be great with your kids? And, and so that's sort of like what you're saying, being intelligent, mm -hmm. emotionally intelligent, intelligent in the moment, following the spirit of God and figuring out, okay, what does this person need? Uh, and instead of just, how can I just get through these five to seven questions? Yeah, one of the things I've I've been trying to share with the people I'm training to be disciple makers is, look, don't be so inflexible. It's I mean, some people are too dogmatic about the resources. They're too dogmatic about the questions. Like the goal isn't to get through every question. The goal is to have a good conversation. And so sometimes you're going to use two or three of those questions. Sometimes you're going to use all of them. Sometimes you might not even use any of them. The Holy Spirit is going to lead you where you go. But, you know, I think that the, the more I've mentored, the better I've gotten at asking good questions. It seems, Scott, to, to me, I'm sure you feel the same way, is... The less I talk, the the better the conversation goes, um, and so that's a little bit of a skill you've got to you've got to learn. And and so people that are used to doing that face to face, maybe you're like intimidated by the concept of doing it over the phone or or online in a in a Google Hangout or a Zoom call like this. But again, I would just encourage you 
I think for me personally, Scott, I don't know about you, for me personally, I think having a conversation over the phone is even easier for me because what I do, just I'll give you some real, a real practical tip here is I'll, I'll use a headset and then I'll actually have the topic on my phone and I'm literally looking at the topic and asking questions as I go and it's just a real simple interaction. It almost feels like I have a cheat sheet looking at that topic and those discussion questions. So for me, Scott, as a little bit of an introvert, it's actually easier for me to disciple over the phone because I'm not as worried about eye contact. I'm not as worried about like some, like I can really look at the notes. I might even have some other notes in a journal or whatever. So for me, I love discipling over the phone. And a lot of people, maybe uh, that's going to have to be a skill that they learn in this coronavirus world that we live in. Because I don't think this is going to end anytime soon. Yeah, I agree. I think that there are some advantages to being over the phone. And, you know, you lose out on being able to read body language from people, maybe. But I do think it's a little easier to ask some probing questions over the phone. Um, maybe for, for some people, especially if you're not as used to it, it it's just... People maybe are a little less defensive. They can be a little more open just because they're talking into a phone. I don't know why, but that's just a, that's just my uh, my realization is that we can sometimes push conversations a little deeper over the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you it forces you to be a little more comfortable with, with pause, which mm -hmm. I'm not always very comfortable with, but I've learned to be over the phone. Like you can, you can ask a question and give them a, give them. 20 seconds to think about it before they answer and, and even just say, Hey, take your time, like give it some thought, no rush. You know? And I think that's some of that is really, that's part of what we're learning and mentoring. Anyway, Jesus was obviously so good at this. He asked really, really good questions and then he allowed them to answer. And sometimes their answers, some of the disciples had some really dumb answers, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that was part of the learning process. And Jesus was trying to teach them that. One more tip, I think, and then we'll finish for now. And Scott, it's to be proactive. And what we mean by that is, I know for me, um, I've had to actually put it on the calendar, like schedule the mentoring relationship. And what I love about the quarantine is when I, when I schedule something on Google Hangouts, I literally, I share that calendar appointment with the person. And if we're going to do it on a Hangout, then they've got the link right there. And we just jump on a call or we jump on a video call together and we're off to the races. So be proactive. Yeah, one blessing of this time too is, is kind of like what you're saying is uh, it used to be a lot harder for me to schedule meetings with people. And now it's so much easier to schedule meetings because people are pretty free. Um, and yeah, be proactive. You know, I just think of the example of Jesus who was very busy and he had a lot of people with a lot of demands on his time. And a lot of people wanted him to do a lot of things. And he just always kept his mission, the mission from the father central all the time. And even when he did other things, um, when he cast out demons or, or taught people or whatever, he still got back to the main mission from the father. And I think that's just a good example. Like let's use our time wisely. Let's be proactive. Let's not waste our quarantine um, because God's going to use this time for great things. Yeah, that's good. So, Followers of Jesus out there, if you're using those Pursue God resources, remember, this is an opportunity, probably unlike any opportunity you've ever had. Don't put, don't put your discipling relationships on hold. Don't pause them. I think you should actually step them up at this time. We'll put some questions down below so that you can talk through this topic and learn more about it. We'll have some other helpful links down below. And then use those resources at PursueGod.org. That's what they're there for. Go out and help somebody pursue God.